Now let's look at uh, peripheral nerve and we're going to begin with a trichrome stained uh, section of peripheral nerve. This one has a number of sections on the slide, some peripheral nerve cut in cross section on the top here and in longitudinal section on the bottom here. It's been stained with trichrome so as to demonstrate connective tissue and in this instance the trichrome staining is going to result in blue staining where there's collagenous uh, connective tissue, mainly collagen type 1 um, based connective tissue. So let's commence by taking a look at the uh, longitudinal section here. One thing I should just make a point of here is that you'll know that uh, nerves are made up of uh, individual bundles of axons called uh, fascicles. So this is a fascicle cut in longitudinal section. This is a fascicle cut in longitudinal section. We know that fascicles are bound together externally by what a connective tissue layer known as the epineurium. So this is going to be epineurium here and epineurium here because it encloses both of these fascicles. Whereas individual fascicles are surrounded by a connective tissue layer called perineurium and so this is going to be perineurium along here because it's associated just with this fascicle this is perineurium along here because it's associated just with this fascicle one other thing which you may notice immediately upon looking at a slide of this magnification is that it appears quite wavy uh, in appearance and this is a very characteristic appearance of peripheral nerve in longitudinal section and we'll see this and use it as a diagnostic feature a little bit later as we look at peripheral nerve in uh, the context of another tissue and where it's been stained only with uh, hematoxylin and aosin. So recall that as we look at uh, peripheral nerve that myelin um, isn't preserved in peripheral nerve specimens where the peripheral nerve specimen uh, has been um, made in the normal traditional way because the myelin uh, is soluble in the organic solvents that are used to prepare the tissue and as a consequence it washes out. So what we're left with here is the um, connective tissue which surrounds each of the individual nerve fibers or axons, that is the endoneurium, and then within that uh, the remains of axonal proteins and so on, but we don't actually see any uh, myelin. Let's go up in magnification just a little bit. And as we do, what we can see here is this little blue line which we see here is again a little bit of, um, in fact this is uh, perineurium because it sur surrounds a, a very small fascicle here um, which we see here but the key feature which I want to see want you to see here is the fact that we can very clearly and very distinctly make out individual nodes of Ranvier. And you'll recollect nodes of Ranvier are regions where you have two myelinated segments uh, abut one another. Here's the, a node of Ranvier uh, here, very clear and very distinct one here. Here's a node of Ranvier here, very clear and very distinct. And these nodes of Ranvier are absolutely and definitively uh, diagnostic for peripheral nerve in longitudinal section. Let's look now at the uh, peripheral nerve uh, trichrome stained as it's cut in uh, cross section and here it's actually considerably easier perhaps to understand the various connective tissue layers uh, which surround the nerve. So if we were to take this as uh, the anatomical nerve here then the connective tissue we see around here is epineurium which surrounds all of the individual nerve fascicles and we can see there's quite a bit of fat in here we zoom up in magnification just a little bit. Now we can get a better look here. If we were looking just and considering these fascicles here, then the epineurium is that which surrounds all of the uh, fascicles, whereas the perineurium surrounds an individual fascicle. So this is the perineurium belonging to this fascicle. This is the perineurium belonging to this fascicle. In fact, you can see that even the fascicles are sort of subdivided, and we can see some of these little thin, delicate connective tissue septae that extend in here which subdivide the fascicles into even smaller uh, fascicles as we can see here. So I suppose technically we should refer to this as a nerve, we should refer to the outer layer here as epineurium and the connective tissue which um, penetrates in here is the, is the perineurium. We're going to look perhaps at this smaller fascicle here because this will give us a very good uh, view of what peripheral nerve and cross section looks like. One thing I would want to point out to you is you might notice blood vessels here, 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 here and here nerves themselves are very vascular structures and require quite a, an intensive uh, blood supply. So as we move up again now, I want to remind you that myelin is extracted and washed out from routine histological preparations and therefore when we see these axons cut in cross-section, we won't see myelin, we merely see white space where the myelin once was. 
So as I increase in magnification again, here we are. We can see the blue uh, connective tissue here, which surrounds each and every one of these individual axons. So this is the endoneurium, the connective tissue sheath, which belongs to each individual uh, axon. Here's an axon cut and cross-section. Here's an axon cut and cross-section. Here's an axon cut and uh, cross-section. The pale surrounding area is where the myelin sheath would have been, were the myelin here. And the central dark red staining area is the remains of the uh, axon itself. And one thing you can tell, even uh, looking at this magnification, is that the axons are of different diameters, but fall within a pretty narrow range of uh, diameters. <coughs> Here, here, and here are perhaps unmyelinated axons or very thin uh, myelinated axons. So this is the appearance of peripheral nerve in uh, cross-section in a trichrome stain slide. On this slide, uh, and this is um, really just for interest sake, we're going to take a look at a cross-section of a nerve fascicle that has been prepared in a special way and stained with a special material called osmium or osmic acid, which specifically stains fatty material like the myelin sheath. So on this slide we'll actually be able to see the myelin which surrounds individual uh, myelinated axons. So here's the fascicle. The uh, thin layer we see on the outside here would be the uh, perineurium for this uh, fascicle. The, you can see that the remaining space between the individual axons here appears white. So connective tissue doesn't really stain, certainly the endoneurial connective tissue doesn't really stain in this uh, osmium stain. And now again as we increase in magnification we can see here these are individual axons. The black staining which we see on the outside here is osmium stained uh, myelin and the paler staining uh, area in the center is where the axon uh, would be. Um, this paler uh, staining area, the axon fills all of this volume in life but after the tissue has been prepared the axon shrinks back and is only visible really sometimes as just a little shrunken uh, mass of material here. And here again this slide should serve to indicate that myelinated nerves come in different uh, diameters. Some of them are quite large and others are uh, quite small. Here's a little nerve fascicle stained in a similar but not exactly the same way as the uh, previous one. Here's the very small nerve fascicle here. In this case we can see the uh, connective tissue of the perineurium, um, although in this case it, this might be a small nerve so maybe we would call it the epineurium. And we can see this connective tissue uh, here forming a sort of a capsule around the nerve bundle itself. We see blood vessels here, here and here, and uh, lots of other connective tissue associated with this. In fact, although I'm not going to show it at low mag, this is in fact a very small uh, fascicle of a very much uh, larger nerve. And finally, if we increase in magnification again, here again we get a very good um, sense of the myelin, which is here stained very black. So this is the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath surrounds the axon. The axon has shrunken back in the course of tissue preparation. You see it here is this little brown thing here and here and here. And that is a classic appearance of peripheral nerve stain from myelin cut in cross section. You've looked at this slide before. Actually I believe you would have been looking at it to look at smooth muscle in the wall of this artery here or smooth muscle in the wall of this uh, vein here. Of course, most times that we look at tissue, it's stained with hematoxylin and eosin, and not with special stains to demonstrate connective tissue, or particularly special stains to demonstrate the myelin sheath of nerve. Nonetheless, you need to be able to identify nerve where you can see it in um, cross or longitudinal section in the context of surrounding tissues. Now one little trick is that very often nerves travel in the same bundle of connective tissue as do arteries and veins and where you have an artery and a vein and some nerve traveling together this is referred to as a neurovascular bundle. Uh, this section here has actually been taken through a neurovascular bundle and the nerve part of it is seen in this region up here where, and also uh, here where when we look in a second at higher magnification we'll see peripheral nerve in at least longitudinal and perhaps oblique section. There may even be some cross section present. So looking at the larger of the bundles here, I hope at very first that you can certainly appreciate here's the classic wavy appearance of peripheral nerve and here again peripheral nerve cut in longitudinal section or in oblique section where the plane of the section is majority uh, longitudinal. If we go up in magnification a little bit again here we can see along here we've got a few of these uh, axons have been cut in cross section as they turn out toward us and turn back into the plane of section. 
And here we've got uh, lots and lots of axons uh, cut in uh, longitudinal or uh, oblique uh, section. If I move to the adjacent one here, And you can look as well. Again, the wavy appearance. Incidentally, the nuclei, which can be seen here, are predominantly the nuclei Schwann cells, the cells which are responsible for producing the myelin sheath for uh, myelinated nerves in the um, peripheral uh, nervous system, but uh, not in the central nervous system. As an exercise for yourself, you should take a look and see if you can identify any nodes of Ranvier uh, in the longitudinally sectioned material, and if so, you should uh, take a picture of them. Up here again, I think we'll probably see that there's some uh, peripheral nerve with some cross sections uh, cut here. And here again, we see them little cross sections with the axon uh, toward the center having shrunk back. The myelin, of course, doesn't uh, stain. If we take the entirety of the structure here as being the nerve, then we can see that the outer part here, the connector tissue layer out here, is what we would call the epineurium because it contains a large number of, or a number of uh, fascicles. The connective tissue that immediately surrounds each fascicle individually is going to be called the perineurium. And the endoneurium, you know, is the pink staining material that forms, if you like, the skeleton framework or outline of each of the axons here. One thing to notice, or two things to notice, are first, again, there are lots of blood vessels in the epi and perineurium because nerves are very vascular. And the second thing to notice is that really there's no clear distinction between the perineurium, or sorry, epineurium on the outside of the nerve and the perineurium that forms the um, uh, inner part surrounding each of the uh, fascicles. Let's just look at one other region here because it's representative of smaller pieces of nerve that you'll see in tissues. Let's look at this here. This is peripheral nerve axons. They're going to be uh, cut predominantly in longitudinal section. As we move over here, and here we go again, the classic wavy appearance. Uh, this nerve bundle separates back a little bit from the um, epi or perineurium which surrounds it, which we can see here. We'll see occasional axons cut in cross section, but the bulk of them in uh, longitudinal section. In fact, there's a little blood vessel running down the uh, center of this piece of uh, peripheral nerve. We can maybe follow over here again. Here's more peripheral nerve. Here's Actually, it's going to be a branch of this one. And again, peripheral nerve cut in uh, cross section. So by now you should be able to recognize peripheral nerve um, on its own in isolation, stained with uh, special techniques to demonstrate either connective tissue or to demonstrate myelin, and you should be able in an H&E stained specimen to distinguish peripheral nerve in longitudinal and in cross-section.